you, Maris. Uh, so picking up where Candace on the last, last panel um, left off, the need to close the knowledge and the trust gap. So this is a really exciting project. This is the first movie I've been a part of. Uh, when you asked me uh, if I would uh, be a part of God Bless Bitcoin, the reason why I thought this would be such an important project is because education is always such a big challenge. I think for everybody in this industry, it's been a theme throughout the conference today. For our work here in Washington, D.C., working with policymakers and regulators, a lot of times when we talk about Bitcoin, it sometimes quickly can turn into a technical conversation and there's not a ton of resources just for normal people. So that really was kind of my interest in being involved for this. But Brian, this is not your, your daytime job. You have a full, no. you're not a movie uh, executive. You just, ha this happens to be a project you're, you're behind. What what inspired this? Yeah, like you said, I'm the CEO and CIO of Off the Chain Capital, which is my day job, and making this movie is my side hustle. <laughs> um, but because we're a registered RIA with the SEC, I need to just say that the views that I express here are my, my personal views, not part of Off the Chain Capital. So we decided to make this movie because I think the world needs to be educated about the moral and religious reasons to have a sound monetary policy. Um, we see every day how the poor and middle class are getting left behind because you know, they're being ravaged by inflation. And it's a lack of knowledge that I think is the cause of that. And I think if more people were educated that, that there's this parallel financial system you could opt into voluntarily that, you know, it would be a better system for the world to be on. And so we, we just want to make this movie, it's a documentary. It's, you know, like I said, it's, you know, we just want to educate the world about, you know, the, the two different systems that are out there. Yeah, and a lot of times, a, another challenge that I think everybody faces is that there's a lot of misinformation, just kind of flat out wrong information about this space. There's a lot of skepticism, a lot of criticism. People, oftentimes, their first impression of Bitcoin may not be super positive. Uh, my uncle was uh, a victim of a ransomware attack. The first time he had to ever buy Bitcoin was because he had to pay it right. for ransom. Like, not yeah. a great first impression. No. So the title of the movie is God Bless Bitcoin. So mm. why are we bringing God into this? What, what yeah. is the, the, the kind of purpose behind and the premise of the script? Yeah, so it's the moral and religious reasons. So when we look at the moral reasons, you know, there's all sorts of you know, if you look at sound money, you know, it's, you know, if you look at the current monetary system, it's based off of inflation. So that's like a secret or hidden tax that's stealing our time and energy. But when you look at the religious reasons, um, if you look at all the world's religions, they kind of all say the same thing. Um, so for example, if you look at like the Hindu religion, you know, the ultimate enlightenment is called moksha, and that's where you want freedom and liberty and so, you know, we explore that. We, we meet with Hindu swamis. Um, when you look at the Muslim religion, there's 1.8 million Muslims that are out there. And the current financial system that we have is based on interest. You know, Sharia law is, you know, you can't charge interest or earn interest and be Sharia compliant. So Bitcoin helps fix that problem too. So we, we just, we go through all the world's religions, you know, Catholic, you know, you know Protestant, Judah, we found two um, Bitcoin rabbis that were very informative on how Judaism ties into this freedom technology called Bitcoin. And so, you know, for me, it's just been a learning experience going through this. And, you know, you know we're making this documentary so we could explain to the world you know, what we found. And you brought a clip. So what's the first yeah. clip yeah, you're going to so, share with uh, us? Michael Saylor was um, gracious enough to be interviewed. And we asked him about, you know, what his thoughts were about the moral reasons about having, you know, Bitcoin as part of your monetary policy. And um, so the clip covers his aspect, his moral reason is about property rights. So he thinks property rights are, you know, human rights. And so you can see, you can watch the clip and see what Michael says about property rights and Bitcoin. You know, if you show up at the airport with all of your money in any other nation state, they either arrest you, they send you home, or more likely, they take your money and send you home, 
right? Try to walk through an airport in most countries with a million dollars of gold in your backpack and see how far you get. You can't even walk through with more than 10,000 of anything. Governments have um, captured the capital of their citizens and if they can force you to use the currency while they've got the capital captured, they can simply seize as much of your capital as they wish by debasing the currency more aggressively. Bitcoin reverses that balance of power because now for the first time you could actually store your capital in a hardware wallet or in a set of private keys and you don't have to move it physically through the airport or on a ship. You can actually move it through cyberspace with 12 words. You could send all, all the digital capital in the country over a WhatsApp message. You know, there's a famous phrase, you know, an armed society is a polite society. Uh, when the citizens are disarmed and the government's the only entity with the guns, then one person can simply steal all the property and when 95% of the citizens are starving to death, that's not a problem as long as 1% of the people have the guns and you feed the 1% with the guns, you can still control the country. And that's what happened in many nations in North Korea, in Cuba, in Zimbabwe, etc. Bitcoin economically arms everybody. Like for the first time in history, you can fight back. You actually can store your economic energy and protect it with cryptography and a 300 exahash wall of encrypted energy and no mayor or governor or country can seize that from you, no matter how much weaponry they have. And um, what happens then? If I can't take it from you by a force, I have to negotiate with you. And that means instead of just losing everything, I'm gonna try to sweet talk you or negotiate you into giving me half. And we call that tax. <laughs> mm -hmm. Michael okay. Saylor, thank you. There's more, there's more. Yeah. Uh, Michael Saylor is just one of the Bitcoin celebrities that we've interviewed. We've also interviewed Mark Cuban, uh, Natalie Brunel, uh, Mark Yusko, Dan Held, many others. Uh, these interviews will be juxtaposed against interviews with teachers of all the world's religion. So as Brian mentioned, we've also interviewed Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, and we're digging into what the, the sacred uh, scripts, uh, uh, what they say about money. Um, what is an honest way to transact? What, what is money supposed to look like? And regardless of what religion you subscribe to, or even if you subscribe to any religion at all, uh, scriptures traditionally are the moral codes of our society. So oftentimes when we talk about Bitcoin, people don't, you know, don't really understand why, why uh, this is honest money. And we're making the case that Bitcoin is one of the most honest forms of money, if not the most honest form uh, of money available so far. Um, so out of the interviews we've already conducted, what have you gathered thus far? What are some of your big takeaways? Yeah, you can look at, um, you know, like we talked about the Muslim and Judaism. Um, so Judaism is pretty interesting too. So we met with a Bitcoin rabbi, we interviewed him last week, and um, I haven't watched 100% of his interview, but he basically makes the connection between Judaism and blockchain technology, because if you look at Judaism, um, you know, different, you know, the, the family history, the culture is passed along generation to generation to generation. And the, you know, the text is like that. And then they, they're all connected. And the point that he made was a, it's almost like a blockchain. You know, it just builds on top of each other. And that history can't be disposed or eliminated because it's already been created. And so that's one of the points that he makes, which I thought were, was pretty interesting. And then when we look at the moral case for Bitcoin too, you know, we look at, you know, we spend our time and our energy and the talents that God gives us to create value for ourselves and for others. And that time and energy is being diluted when the government prints more and more money. Um, so for example, you know, since we went on a, um, went off the gold standard in 1971, the amount of money in circulation has grown an average of 7% per year. 
Over the past three years since COVID, the money supply increased by 40%. So if you deposited $1,000 in the bank three years ago, you could only buy $600 worth of goods today. And so we go through that, that exercise too, just to show that you know, you know, we work, we spend our time and energy to create this value, but then when the government prints more and more money, it's stealing our time and it's stealing our energy from us. And so when you look at why people are working more and more hours and they're not getting ahead and they're piling up more and more debt, it's because of the secret hidden theft that's going on with our wealth. And so we want to explore that too and you know, just explain how immoral that is. Yeah, so I, I was an economics major at a public university and I was in college during the 2008 financial crisis and I really wanted to understand what was happening in the economy in, in real time and I was incredibly frustrated that the textbooks couldn't explain anything that was actually happening. And that's really kind of how my journey to Bitcoin initially started, was just wanting to understand how our financial system works, how our monetary system works. And I had to go study all that independently on my own, finding my own resources. And what I learned was that, it, to me, it didn't feel like it really represented our American values. And I felt like we could do better. Um, and that the events of the past week, you know, kind of here we are all over again in a major economic crisis. And a lot of people have learned just in the past couple of days that if you don't understand how the financial system works, if you don't understand how the monetary system works, you could be taking on all sorts of risk completely unknowingly. Yeah, Thomas Jefferson says, it's in the region of ignorance that tyranny begins. And so it's important for us as Americans to understand history. So if you look back over the past 3,500 years, we as humans opted into a gold and silver system, and that's what we used for the last, like I said, 3,500 years. Even the first 195 years of the United States of America, we were on a gold and silver standard. And then in 1971, Nixon temporarily suspended the convertibility of gold back into dollars and took us off the gold standard. And that fiat experiment that we've been going through for the past, past 52 years, it's failing. And we see it failing, you know, with, you look at what's going on with the banking system today. You know, just think about it. We, we built a fractional reserve banking system on top of a monetary system that could be easily debased. And when you compare that to a Bitcoin system where um, Bitcoin's limited to 21 million Bitcoin, so it's the hardest money in the world. You, no matter how high the price goes, you can't create more Bitcoin. And the government creates more and more dollars every day. So you have this limited supply of Bitcoin, and if you deposit Bitcoin into a Bitcoin bank, the Bitcoin banks are required to hold it one to one. And so you, know, you have this, this very strong Bitcoin system, and then you have a, this fiat bank system that is, in my opinion, built on sand. And if you look at what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, you know, Jesus preaches that a wise man will build his house on stone, a foolish man will build his house on sand. And I just ask you, you know, which one of our systems is sand and which one of our systems is, is stone? And when you go through this exercise, it just seems like the Bitcoin system is the, the stronger system. And I think what will happen is that as more and more people get educated around the world, we'll just naturally opt into this new system. You know, it will be a nonviolent revolt. It will just be voluntarily, you know, we'll just opt into the system, just like humans opted into a gold and silver system 3,500 years ago. Yeah, it's not all bad. Uh, there is good news. And Galatians 5.1 tells us that it, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Bitcoin is freedom-enabling technology. Bitcoin allows us to have more control of our money, and blockchain innovations allows us to have more control of digital assets of all times. And it is for freedom that we are producing this movie so we can teach as many people as possible about this freedom-enabling technology. Let's play the trailer.
The most transformative aspect of Bitcoin is really almost a social economic experiment. You know, can all the users of a money be in control of the monetary system? It is the people's money, and that's truly revolutionary. I do think that most people are undereducated about Bitcoin. Bitcoin really is the foundation for true monetary independence. This is the internet of money. Bitcoin is the people that are over the bullshit. The dollar will dramatically lose its purchasing power. The more they print, the more it gets diluted. Who it's good for is the people at the tippy top. And with Bitcoin, you just can't do that. The current fiat system is going to collapse. We are going to see huge changes in our lifetime. We're in a phased transition of society. It's more than a financial revolution. The psychological implications of Bitcoin are profound. Bitcoin does represent freedom. Bitcoin is truth. There have been intentional disinformation campaigns. Most people who are skeptical think it's primarily used by drug dealers and money launderers. Highly trackable, highly traceable, not built for criminals anymore. 90% of US dollar bills have cocaine residue on them. Which currency do criminals use the most? I think their preferred currency is the US dollar. But Bitcoin can't be destroyed, can't be hacked. There's no single entity in charge. There's no single point of failure. So you could hate Bitcoin and it'll still benefit you. The percentage of renewables operating in the Bitcoin network is actually shockingly high. And so it's actually not adding to the carbon footprint of the planet. That makes Bitcoin the most renewable or green energy industry in the world. The biggest threat really is what the US government decides. It's also the threat Bitcoin is purpose built for. It is trying to remove politics from money. Everyone operates by the same rules. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, this is new territory. That I don't think the world has fully appreciated yet. There's 21 million Bitcoins. There's 8 billion people on the planet. You do the math. It's going to be priceless. Where does it take us next? Time will tell, but it's very exciting. Bitcoin can make the world a better place. And there's nothing you can do to stop. I'm excited for this movie. Yeah. Proverbs 23, 23 tells us, buy the truth and do not sell it. We are sharing the wisdom and the understanding that we have about money and Bitcoin to the people of the world through this documentary. And we have an opportunity for you to join us in this journey. Yeah, one of the things that, that makes this movie special is that it's been fully funded by the Bitcoin community. You, we've raised $2 million so far. And um, it makes it one of the, I, mean, I think it makes it the most well-funded Bitcoin docu documentary ever. Yeah, no, I, it is. And uh, the Chamber of Digital Commerce, our foundation, is proud to partner, um, Brian, with you and with God Bless Bitcoin, the movie. We are sponsoring a crowdfunding campaign. Um, anyone from our community is invited to donate to this campaign to help bring it to the masses. 100% um, of your donation will go to support this movie. Um, and because our foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit, it is 100% tax deductible. Um, so what better way uh, to support an education campaign for the community? You can go to godblessbitcoin.movie or scan the QR code on the screen uh, to learn about the movie, to follow our campaign, and to support our efforts. And just to close out, I just want to thank you for your support, and we'll see you in the movie theater in 2024. Thank you.